With that said, George, if you wouldn't mind praying for us. I would love to. Father, again, tonight we, we come together um, through technology. Um, we say we thank you for that technology. We thank you that we could make use of everything. Paul said all, everything is permissible, but is it uh, beneficial? And we want to use this um, to advance your kingdom. We want to use this tonight to grow together. Um, and when we speak about children, <laughs> there's no handbook. There's no clever answers. There's no body that can say one size fit all. This is how you need to do it. It doesn't work like that. And you've given us children because it's a massive privilege and responsibility, mm -hmm. but it's also shaping us. It's, mm -hmm. They are also shaping our character. Um, and tonight we pray that we will take great courage, that mm -hmm. fear will be exposed, lies will be exposed, mm -hmm. um, even things that are cultural, but it's um, not part of your kingdom culture, mm -hmm. will be challenged and weighed and found wanted. And you will give us a real place and the real things. Yes. We pray for our children. We pray for every child, mm -hmm. every grandchild mm -hmm. that um, are represented here, mm -hmm. either yes. through our church or through people who are sitting. We bless them in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray for those who are not close to you. We trust you. Mm -hmm. We were not close to you also at one stage. Mm. And look what you've done. Mm. If you can do it with me, you can do it with anyone. And so mm. we've got full confidence tonight that you will bring everyone in in your right time. Mm -hmm. But we pray, Lord, that you will make us more like you in that process. Mm. That we will learn how to flow in the spirit, how to be mm. patient and kind and gentle, firm mm. and yet soft. So tonight we pray that you bless us. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will feel so welcome and that you speak into us, into our hearts, and that you will be the one who we will listen to clearly. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so first, I thought what we would do is share the names of your children and what age they are, and of course, if they're married, and if they have children. So Carolyn, do you mind starting us off? <laughs> All right, so Melody is 35, she is married, and she has three children. And Sammy is 32, I think she's 32, <laughs> 33, and she is married and she has five children. Joshua is 28, 20, 29, and he's married and he has two children. And Nikki is 19 and no children and not married. <laughs> <laughs> Just wow. finished school. <laughs> so you yeah. have how many grandchildren now? Ten. Ten grandchildren. Wow. The, the, the quiver is very, very full. Yes. <laughs> and so okay. why don't you share for everybody? Yeah. Um, I'll go the opposite direction. Jack is 15, and then he has three older sisters. Elizabeth is 16, um, Sarah is 18, and Carissa is 20. Mm. Yeah. So we... Um, we cover two different phases of the lives of children, you might say. Um, probably from just at least looking at some of the names that are on here, most of the people who are on at least the Zoom call, they have mostly young, younger children. And uh, you know, there are some closer to, at least to our stage, but most younger. And so just to let you know, we'll be covering every stage and trying to do that. but. I thought this was a, a good fundamental question I'm going to throw to you, Carolyn, which is, what is the most important lesson you can teach your children? I don't know. It's, it's one lesson that has different compartments. Mm. So I think the most important lesson to teach your children is that they're part of a family. Mm. And that each child is its individual. They are mm. special. And... Um, yeah, that it's just that that unity. Mm -hmm. And I think with us especially, um, just mm -hmm. as an example of that lesson um, to teach our kids or what we taught them mm -hmm. from when they were young mm -hmm. is they are included 
They are part of the family. It's not mom and dad that makes the decisions. We mm -hmm. always got our kids together, mm -hmm. whether they really understood what we were talking about mm -hmm. or whether they didn't. Um, you know, we still, they still sat there mm -hmm. and we decided mm -hmm. as a family, we spoke about things. Um, even when we left Pretoria, we went to ASM and when we moved from Bible ASM, school. going to a uh, Bible school, sorry, ASM is Africa School of Missions, mm -hmm. the Bible school that we studied at, um, but we included our kids, mm -hmm. you know, and we just said, this is what God is speaking to us about. Those who were at a level of understanding, like Melody and Sammy, they were older at that mm -hmm. stage. God spoke to them, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I just think that's a big lesson is that the children is not, well, the child is not on one side mm -hmm. and the parents on this side, but we are a unit mm -hmm. and we make decisions together. Can I add yeah. something to that? Yes. Which I think it's mm -hmm. important as Sam spoke about the different cultures. Yeah. So here comes the first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so you in North America, you say, I am because I am. Mm -hmm. And we say that's very unbiblical. <laughs> we say in Africa, I am because we are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fundamental difference in the worldview mm -hmm. that um, in Africa we say it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in an hazard work, we, we constantly remind each other. Mm -hmm. And um, right. Dan is listening, he will tell you sometimes in Carolyn, though. Uh, dance boys to school she will say to them do you want me to pull the car over <laughs> <laughs> and show you uh, give you a reason to fight <laughs> where other people will be offended Dan and Jay will be very happy for mm -hmm. that because they see us as co-parents mm -hmm. in a sense and I, I think that's what mm -hmm. Carolyn is saying we try mm -hmm. to right. say you belong to a herd you are mm -hmm. part of a group here mm -hmm. and you it's a privilege and a responsibility mm -hmm. from yeah and I think also, you know, when you've made a decision, um, you know, you just don't know where you're going next. Like we were praying, we were going in, called into the mission field, doing that. We had a home, we had a pool, we had a car, cars, um, you know, that. And just saying, look, we're doing this as a family. God is calling us as a family. He's not just called mommy and daddy. He's calling all of us. And you must realize the food that we eat, the place where we're going to sleep, the vehicle that we're going to drive may be very different. Mm -hmm. You know, yours, mm -hmm. the house will be smaller. You may have to share a room, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of scenario and mm -hmm. making them understand mm -hmm. that what they have mm -hmm. is not always what they're going to have. Mm -hmm. And for them to be aware of that so that mm -hmm. they can appreciate mm -hmm. what they've got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they look back, you know, just mm -hmm. to say, what did I prefer? Having so much mm -hmm. or having, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. difference, mm -hmm. understand, but mm -hmm. preparing them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so that they know that they're not always going to have their own room, for instance. Yes. Yeah. What if they said, no, I refuse? Well, I mean, if they had said, no, I refuse, then just sit down and say, but why do you refuse? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and if it's because I'm going to leave my friend, my best mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's understandable. You know, a child's mm -hmm. mind thinks differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just to sit with the child mm -hmm. and say, okay, you can air your views, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. But just remember where we go. Mm -hmm. Your friend and the friend's parents can come and visit us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you will have, you know, time to play. Or when we go back to where the friend is staying, mm -hmm. then you have time to play. Mm -hmm. You know, but mm -hmm. not just to say, just trish. Right. Because it's a family decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the children mm -hmm. should be able to share their views and their opinions mm -hmm. and how we react and just say, that's okay. You know, it's mm -hmm. all right for you to feel like that. Let's just understand why. Mm -hmm. And then just bring them slowly, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if, and I'm going to push a little bit further, just because mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> if a child said, even after you're trying to bring slowly explaining, they say, no, no, mm -hmm. I refuse. And they just refused continuously over and over and over. Would you then stop and say, 
no, we won't do this? Or would you say, go well, regardless of yeah, how that child feels? I think we can really say mm -hmm. we include the children, like when we, we live mm -hmm. our home and we, they were part of that. We said to them, God calls us as a family. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. We're in it as a family. Um, now, that doesn't, when we, in, when we include people in every structure, really, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we give them a veto right. Mm -hmm. It means we are, we are including them because they are part of this plan. They are part of this group of people. And we want to honor them from young and say, we, there's a level of transparency mm -hmm. here that we want you to be part of. Mm -hmm. Kevin and I had to often discuss our finances for our children. Mm -hmm. and had to explain to them right. this is how it's going to be for the next few months and you know, mm -hmm. we want you to understand it. We didn't, they didn't see things are not happening and mm -hmm. just wonder and mm -hmm. guess. We mm -hmm. wanted them to be exposed to these things. Mm -hmm. so we can share a bit later why we think this mm -hmm. is crucial. Mm -hmm. This is a gift to a child, mm -hmm. to introduce them into reality. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a, a similar a gift to a child is to say we hear you we understood what you are saying, but this is what we decide is going to happen as a group. And in mm -hmm. this puppy and mm -hmm. our daddy and, and mommy, mm -hmm. we are deciding this. Um, mm -hmm. We wanted you to hear, we wanted mm -hmm. you to grow in making the right decisions. Yes. So we will never be hijacked, mm -hmm. especially by a rebellious child. Mm -hmm. um, we will give them space to throw the tantrums mm -hmm. and to express the moods, but they will not derail what God is doing in and through us as a family. Mm -hmm. um, that I think is, is um, misplaced and even working against God's right. structure. Right. So I think that's yeah. a very important point. Right. I, I, pushed, I pushed and pushed because I think that there is, um, and we're going to discuss it, maybe this might be a good time, the concept of what is God's design for how to rightly um, structure a family so that you don't uh, idolize your children, so that they're not your ultimate God. And you know, we've talked numerous times about this, that in our Western culture, mm -hmm. and not just in the West, I think it's all around the world in many ways is that people are very tempted, we're all tempted to, in some sense, place a real value and worth, our own worth, even into our child, mm -hmm. a place that they should never bear. And I think the Bible shows so clearly there are many examples where that leads to really dangerous consequences. But I'm wondering if, because when I thought about this question, I thought of it from the concept of, because I totally agree with you, Carolyn, but I see it as, um, that that design structure of how God designed husband and wife mm -hmm. is also the same of what how God designed parent and child mm -hmm. because He designed it with a a very clear cut structure. It's not supposed to be dominating and not out of anger or you know not dictatorial. And that's why we do have conversations. Mm -hmm. We explain. We don't just say, you better obey me because I'm your father. Uh, it, there is a fundamental truth to it, but if you take that tactic, you, you're just going to lead them down a dark road. But there is a truth to the idea that there's a structure that God has designed into this family, and the most prosperous way that a child can experience life is by knowing that that, is, that structure is from God himself. Mm -hmm. And once they veer off that structure, mm -hmm. if they say, I'm not going to listen. Because I, you know, in the Old Testament where someone who cursed their mother and father was stoned to death. Mm -hmm. And it sounds, I mean, obviously today we would never say mm -hmm. that should happen, right? But the reason why that was implemented in God's, within God's people is that God knows that if that structure breaks down, everyone will turn away from him. That there's a there was a design that design, and we're seeing it under attack today. The design structure. So, do you feel as though um, not again? Like, what does it look like to have that design as so foundational that from there then you start building on 
we're a family together. It takes a village to raise a child. How does that work in tandem with each other? Or how does that structure of the father, the mother, you know, the child, they're under, uh, the, the parents are under the child. They're not, and you both said it as well. And I know I'm, I'm going off because I, I wanted to really lay this out so that you can speak to it, all, all three of you, which is your one flesh with your spouse, with your husband and wife. You're first a married couple. And I find that many families that have serious issues, it's because they are devoting themselves so much to their children and nothing to each other and nothing to the Lord. <clears throat> so because of that breakdown of structure, it's actually led to idolatry of children um, where people get a divorce after the kids leave their house. Uh, they're living you know, without any intimacy, whether it's emotional, spiritual, physical, because everything is poured into the children because they've lost the structure. What do you think about that? I mean, that's a huge, this is huge. And I know we're I'm covering a lot because I sort of see that as the most important thing maybe that I think that we could teach our children. For me is that they know that they follow God's design and how the family is structured. And then from there is the fruits of all of the how to do that well, what that was. Yeah. Only what you think about that. Because it, it sort of coincides with what you're saying. I just want to press it a little bit more. I was going to say, um, from when we met last time, uh, you both had mentioned that you tell your children that the two of you are one, right? Yeah. Mom and dad mm -hmm. are one. And that you would give your life for your child, you care that much for them. However, um, it's it begins with both of you right being the the heads of of the family of the household so i actually love how this part of including the children in your uh, maybe it's not the decision making but just more so in where god's leading you and perhaps mom and dad have already received something from the lord and you're including the kids in what you've received and so it, it's a both honoring of mom and dad wife and husband and an honoring of the children i love how that fits together so i don't know if that's yeah. kind of what you're yes. talking about similar what are your, what are your thoughts uh you're right Man. it's a massive topic it's a massive so just, topic we're just kind of touching a few mm -hmm. things yeah. and we can yeah. so the first thing is the biggest gift you can give your child is, is a firm play, what I call a playing field with firm boundaries mm -hmm. um, because we want boundaries. We were created for boundaries. Mm -hmm. God gave us boundaries. We've got boundaries. Even as a husband, I've got boundaries. Carolyn has got boundaries. Our children's got boundaries. And if we all understand those boundaries, we are safe mm -hmm. because you are safe when you are protected in boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so when you create the environment, for your child where you basically say to your child there's no boundaries mm -hmm. you you define that you create anxiety and uncertainty yes. in your child mm -hmm. that because the child is not ready to put that boundaries mm -hmm. there you must create that boundaries because your parents did it and you learned and god showed you and you know god's word there's reasons why there's boundaries mm -hmm. to protect the children i think the second thing about um, which is a little bit harder to hear, I guess, mm -hmm. about um, idling, or, you know, mm -hmm. idolizing your children mm -hmm. would be the hard truth of that is it's not actually about the child, it's about you. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are making yourself an idol. Mm -hmm. You know, when I idolize something, the problem is not what I idolize, the problem is my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm the problem. My heart is the problem. Yes. And so often we address the child in that. The child is just a, a, a product of my idol. Mm -hmm. And so for you to idolize your children is putting massive, unfair, unrealistic, undeserved pressure on that mm -hmm. child. The child doesn't deserve mm -hmm. that. It's, it's a cruel thing to idolize your child. Mm -hmm. you now, this is backed by studies and by 
what is happening. Um, recently, a group of um, CEOs of big companies in Canada were meeting. Mm. And I spoke about the millennium generation and then the, I think it's called the Z generation after mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And they said, they spoke about them coming to the workplace. And they said, these guys at the age of 23, PhDs and MBAs and highly qualified. Mm -hmm. Then the CEOs in this workshop said, our problem is we have to bring them up. Hmm. We had to teach them to become adults because none of them or the majority of them are spoiled brats who mm. demand things, mm. who insist on things, mm. who refuse to take responsibility. And they, they, I deserve that salary. I should have that. I'm not doing that. And so all that idolizing upbringing that you made this child is going to be mm. detrimental mm. for that mm. child as an adult. The child will not survive the cruel world out there. Mm. Because if you give them everything, they're going to think that's life. Mm -hmm. That's why we say to people, they ask us, when should we take children to Africa? Well, the day you take them to your shopping malls, you better get them to a mm. rubbish dump the same day. <laughs> because mm. otherwise you're creating a lie in that child's life. Mm -hmm. Because that child thinks everybody goes to the shopping mall and can buy Xboxes and have earphones. There's nothing wrong with those things, but it's wrong if you think that's normal. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what I deserve and I've got mm -hmm. a right to have. Mm -hmm. You don't have no right to have nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I think mm -hmm. if we really love mm -hmm. our children and we really want the best for them mm -hmm. one day mm -hmm. when they fly, mm -hmm. we, will we will develop them and bring them up in a manner where they can Mm. Be mature and ready mm. to cope with the, the tough, unfair, hard world waiting out there for them. Mm. And I think, um, yeah, we can talk. Maybe I'll stop there, but just yes. to say, I think it's a yes. massive point yes. to bring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the world doesn't revolve around them, right? And they're going to meet, they're, they're going to discover mm -hmm. that, yes. unfortunately, too late, and they're going to go down big time. Mm. I think also with the idolizing part, it can be spoiling mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Because you've made an idol of this child mm -hmm. and the spoiling comes into how do I know if I'm spoiling the child? Mm -hmm. Well, if you've already made an idol of the child, you've spoiled them too much. Mm -hmm. And I think also spoiling mm -hmm. and idolizing it comes with competition mm -hmm. and comes with comparing. Mm -hmm. So my child, um, I've got to get my child the newest phone, um, I-10 or I'd whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, the child's got to be first in class because I'm comparing to my friend's mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. and of course, wow, you know, they're really doing well, mm -hmm. but it's because they've got mm -hmm. the new computer mm -hmm. and the new phone and a first new in class yeah, yeah you know <laughs> because second first, in class. You're second. first in yeah i'm <laughs> second in class they first in class and you know you uh -huh. tend to then spoil the kids in a way that it works out you're idolizing the kids and it just causes damage mm -hmm. you know like george was saying if you ask well. a simple question yeah. i want to ask a simple question if you come to visit me, or I come to visit you, Sam, yes. you still got young children. <laughs> I come to visit you, and uh, I'm near in your house. And you say to me, George, this is my son, Jack. You know, I love this boy. I'm proud of him. Jack just got a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to ask you the question is, what are you saying to Jack mm -hmm. at that moment? Mm -hmm. What are you saying to Jack? Mm -hmm. You saying to Jack, you want your if I want my dad to love me, mm -hmm. I better perform. Mm -hmm. I better get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. I'm, and so the moment Jack does not get a scholarship, the moment he comes second, mm -hmm. he's gonna question his love mm -hmm. of you. He's gonna mm -hmm. question if you mm -hmm. still care for him. Mm -hmm. And and that is a fair yes. question mm -hmm. because why in the first place did you even say that yes. to me? Yes. Yeah. Why As was that important, important for you to say that to me? Yes. That he had a scholarship, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. in the right time, yes. in the right place, by all means. But yes. so often, that's nearly the first thing we, yeah. when we introduce our children or talk right. about them, yeah. we we say, oh yeah, and um, 
she is busy in Harvard now or whatever. Yeah? And, yeah. and I'm thinking, well, let's We got to slip it in somehow. <laughs> you slip oh, it yeah, in it's like Some little slide. Oh. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I thought just as, just to, because it came across my mind, um, and there was a question about sports, but I remember when I was, I was actually struggling with uh, actually Jack, and he was playing baseball, and he was, yeah, I, and I asked him, and I was saying, well, he's been really striking out a lot, and it's hard, it's hard, and I, I think I asked you the question of how do I, how do I not make this an idol, but yet pursue that, so that it doesn't impact him, but yet help him? Like, how do you work that out? And you had shared the story about Joshua and squash, who's actually a very excellent squash player. And do you remember that? You had shared how, maybe, do you mind sharing yeah. that? Yeah, you got it now. Because you had said uh, he would, whether he did really well yes. at a, a yeah. tournament or didn't do so yes. well, mm-hmm. you would be very mindful of how you were either praising him or critiquing him. Yeah. And that's one example of sort of what you were describing yes. of. Yes that you're not defining your son or daughter on the basis of their either achievement yes. or lack of achievement yes. mm-hmm. or their, their worth based on some accolade, something, some, mm-hmm. something they've been praised of or something they haven't done well even. Mm-hmm. How do you get to that place? So I mean, you might share that a little bit. Just to say, you know what? I bathe the marks of my body. <laughs> 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 that is just to be 100% honest. <laughs> To say, of course I want Joshua to be the best. Of course I wanted him to be the South African champion. Yes. And when he got close to the top 10, I could not keep my mouth closed. I think when I saw somebody, I said, oh yeah, and Joshua is in the top 10. You know, I did it. I did it. But you know what? Um, yeah, I just realized one day, it may have just been the way he looked at me. Yeah. I could just that moment, I just realized. Man, it's one thing for me to sit with Joshua and to say to him, you know what, I'm proud you're in the top 10 because you work so hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm proud you made it because you committed yourself mm-hmm. and you worked for it and you did it. Well done, Joshua. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. But another thing is to, say to people, I'm proud of Joshua because he's in the top 10, actually connecting my pride in him to his position. Mm -hmm. And I think um, often we can just talk to each other and they just overhear us. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a huge thing of I've got to perform. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, many, many young international volunteers when they come to Africa would share with us. We had a young lady that played beautiful piano. And she would come to our mm-hmm. house on a Sunday afternoon and she'll play for hours. And then my mother and Carol and I will sit there and listen and afterwards we'll just say, we love listening to you. Mm-hmm. And one day she just turned around and she had tears. She said, I wish my parents would just listen to me once and just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. They always had something to say what I did wrong and why mm-hmm. can't I be better? And, why? Mm-hmm. and she had to come to Africa to play to yeah. us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For somebody to enjoy it, and I could mm-hmm. see the pain in her eyes, mm-hmm. um, and I just think we cause a lot of damage mm-hmm. when we do something like that. To mm-hmm. our but that's sort of what you were saying: is that we have an idolatry. Mm-hmm. That idolatry is being played out, or uh, we're worshiping ourselves through our child, mm-hmm. who's mirroring our own yes. idols, mm-hmm. and it's causing damage to that child, mm-hmm. right? And they often do what we could never do. And that's why we like it. it nearly now we are achieving it. You expect them to live yeah. the life you wanted to live. Yes. Yeah. yes. So tragic. <laughs> when we're... Oh, I bear the marks on my body too. Very easy to do. <laughs> so easy to do. Yeah. I know none of you out there do a weed. Struggle with that. <laughs> struggle. I think Kevin is not like that. I really do think she... She's got the ability to, to laugh steady. Mm-hmm. I never saw her doing that. Mm-hmm. She was never, yeah. Mm. 
like up and down according no. to how well the kids no. did or no. whatever. Yeah. No. yeah, yeah, I think it's always a good thing that if the kids are going to do any form of activity, mm -hmm. um, whether it's sport or what mm -hmm. extramural activity in there, is they must enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not because I want them to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to play chess because I think it's good for you. Mm -hmm. No, they must want to play chess because they want to do chess. Mm -hmm. And if you enjoy it, you know, it's like if you enjoy something, then you may exceed at it. But if you enjoy it and you don't want to get into the team, that's also okay, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so, I mean, all sorts of sports and activities are good for our kids. Yes. And just to encourage them at whatever level, even though they may be first team level, yes. but they just want to splash around, you know, sort yes. of few lengths. It's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. You just enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if the other sibling wants to go for first team, then that's also fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Carolyn. Um, I wanted to ask you about the teen years because we, we got a number of questions about that time period. What, it, what were the teen years, not your teen years, but... <laughs> My teen years were very rebellious. <laughs> <laughs> what were the, your children's tier, teen years like for you? What advice would you give to parents who are either in that stage or are preteen, they're getting ready for those teen years? Mm -hmm. And uh, any just quick thoughts and just some words for that? I think for um, George and I both, for our, for our kids being teens, mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing and that there are going to be questions, there are going to be testings, mm -hmm. there are going to be tryings. Mm -hmm. um, and just with us, we decided to have an open mind. Mm -hmm. So if our daughter, daughters or son came to us and said, oh, I had um, a smoke, I, I had a cigarette today, or my friend I heard was taking drugs, it's not for us to, oh, no, you're not supposed to smoke, you know, mm -hmm. don't listen to them, go away. Mm -hmm. To be open-minded, you know, we just said, okay, let's chat. We'll mm -hmm. allow the, we allowed mm -hmm. our children to talk to us. Um, and to share things mm -hmm. and then you know not to obviously your body language and things like that even mm -hmm. though you may be shocked as ever and want to fall off the chair <laughs> um you know but to have that to you know the same mm -hmm. thing as we do with going places doing mm -hmm. things as a family mm -hmm. it's the same thing mm -hmm. you know that they felt we try to create the atmosphere and the thing at home where they felt the freedom to be able to come and share with us mm -hmm. what they wanted to test or try, what they'd heard at mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. what other friends were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is a big thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and not to have that immediate reaction. Mm -hmm. But for us to say, okay, mm -hmm. this is what this child said and, mm -hmm. you know, how do we take it from mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. You know, and then sit with the child and say, do you think it's right? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what what are your ideas? Mm -hmm. How do you see it? Mm -hmm. Plus giving our input right. as well. Yeah. How about if you um, have that discussion and you're trying to be open-minded, <clears throat> but you do want them to come to a certain conclusion, um, but it's not quite getting there. So you're, you're kind of talking and sharing, but you see that, okay, they're, their worldview, their mindset is, maybe they're not, uh, and this is another discussion too about rebellion, because I think somebody was asking about that. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, how do you discuss and direct? Um, of course, praying for them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, how, do you, how does that happen? I think that's a, you know, it's ongoing, mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. things that the children, the teens are, um, surrounded by you know it's yeah. it's an ongoing thing it's not necessarily something that you'll be able to solve mm -hmm. within one meeting yes when your child comes to you and says all these things but then no but it's a good idea my friends are doing it and i want to do it you know and just to continue to um give love mm 
mm -hmm. to affirm the child, mm -hmm. to make sure that the child knows that you love them. Yes. Even though the child may be saying those things. Yes. But just to continually affirm them. Yes. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand what mm -hmm. you're saying. But do you think it's the right thing? You know? Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. I don't know what else maybe for mm -hmm. else you can think of. Yeah, I mean, uh, we would definitely strongly express mm -hmm. what we believe. Uh -huh. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't think mm -hmm. they will walk away and think, okay, well, my parents would be okay if I... Swim. Yeah. We, I don't think that is what Karen, I don't mm -hmm. think that's what mm -mm. Karen was saying. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying more is that that initial question, your reaction yeah. is yes. so critical yeah. on if they will go on with you mm -hmm. and discuss it or talk about it or even mm -hmm. listen to you. Yes. So yeah, yes, a quick, yes, a challenge. I'm, I'm running a tight ship in my house while you're under my roof. Mm -hmm. This will not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's very really short-sighted mm -hmm. because we're not worried. So if I'm just worried about what happened under my roof, again, it's all about me. Mm -hmm. If I'm worried what's going to happen to my child when they're 20, 30, 40, mm -hmm. then take your time and walk with them. Remind mm -hmm. them of, the, of your family DNA. Mm -hmm. Remind them of the way you brought them up. Remind them of other role models that you that mm -hmm. they got to know on the road, mm -hmm. and and I think for us that's again I think that we always try to get our children to connect with role right. models, mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes zip it up and pray because mm -hmm. it might get to a stage. You know what? Um, all three, all four, our children went through teenage years was radically different, yeah. radically. Mm -hmm. um, Melody was all about studying and athletics. Mm -hmm. um, and Nikki was completely different. Mm -hmm. You know, she had complete, she was piano and other things, you know. And all of them faced challenges, mm -hmm. but we could not treat Nikki the way we treated Melody. Their mm -hmm. characters were different. Their resilience were different. Their, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, the way that they um, receive information. Mm -hmm. Nikki, you've got a small window at a certain time and you've got to do it very gently and right. Mm -hmm. Melody, I could wake her up at two o'clock in the morning and say, now we're going to talk. And she will listen. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think you need to know how mm -hmm. to do it. And you need to be wise, but be very careful. Mm -hmm. yes. The enemy will say to you, as long as it ha I could control, I will mm -hmm. not allow it. Mm -hmm. That's short-sighted. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit all about mm -hmm. yourself again. Yes. And yes. it's not really about the well-being of the child. Mm -hmm. yes. And they live in a rough, rough, mm -hmm. rough world. Mm -hmm. Guys, I don't mm -hmm. know if any of us, if we must go to a public school now, mm -hmm. I think by breakdown, I'll, we will go into a, <laughs> a total <laughs> nervous breakdown. You know, <laughs> what these kids are facing today, it's rough. Mm -hmm. And they... They need us to be a safe, calm place where they can mm -hmm. talk with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, two things that you bring up that are striking for me is that fearful reaction. Um, and I've been so prone to that because I, I think about my own rebellion, right? From mm -hmm. teenage years and then I assume, oh my gosh, that means that if she's doing this or thinking about it, or I think it's going to go all the way, you know, to that point mm -hmm. or... And so then my reaction is so strong and turns my child away rather than, and then the second thing is how you said to love, even while they're going through that struggle mm. or even in rebellion against me. And rather than taking that personally, bringing that to a place of understanding for myself that, okay, it's not about that child and me, but toward especially in their relationship with God mm -hmm. and, and what that means there. And so, yeah, I feel like those two things, what you're saying really uh, resonates with me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So maybe we're staying with teenagers. <laughs> what if you don't like your teenager's friend? And this friend is not respectful not considerate, 
doesn't make good choices, is influencing your child down a dark path. And we know, and just read Proverbs and Friends, how critical friendships are. Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts? What do you do then? Yeah. yeah, I would just, I mean, I want to hear like other people, but I would just again say, there is not a golden rule here. You've got mm-hmm. different personalities. The word I was looking for is temperaments. Yeah. You've got different temperaments, mm-hmm. different stages. Mm-hmm. Again, Joshua, it was the easiest thing for me mm-hmm. to say to him and even to say to Joshua, don't be friends with that guy. Mm-hmm. Just believe me, not good. Uh-huh. And I think if in a week he will just change and move on. You know, mm-hmm. it, it just yeah. how it is. Mm-hmm. That would have been a completely different thing if I had to say to that to Sammy or Melody or Nikki or something. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. um, they are unique human beings that mm-hmm. discover life mm-hmm. and, and how we need to intervene and tell them, I'm not saying do not do something. Mm-hmm. You've got to fight for your child, okay? But not mm-hmm. with your child. Mm-hmm. You've got to fight for your child. Mm-hmm. So maybe mm-hmm. you've got to just... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, sort out that person. You know? <laughs> <laughs> sort out. Sort out that other person. You know? um, but as much as it is, um, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Lots of it must happen in prayer. Mm-hmm. Wait patiently for the right moment. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Step in. Mm-hmm. And if your child sins, you do it out of really concerned and love mm-hmm. and you've prayed it out mm-hmm. got a much better chance to be heard mm-hmm. than um, you come in all guns blazing you know? yes. mm-hmm. I think it's just that it's so critically important mm-hmm. as they define themselves mm-hmm. and they attract it to these other views of world mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. 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 yeah no, that's good and I think also what helps again is if your child does have such a friend or want to have such a friend and bringing them into your home and we as parents um, irrespective of whether the child is disrespectful mm-hmm. the friend mm-hmm. is disrespectful just to you know greet the person ask them how they are mm-hmm. even though they may be short with you or whatever mm-hmm. the same behave the same way mm-hmm. to your child as to the friend Mm -hmm. and so the friend can see that their attitude their behavior their Mm -hmm. disrespect whatever it may be Mm -hmm. is not having an influence on us Mm -hmm. as our child's parents Mm -hmm. and you know just being Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. loving on them you know you just not knowing the child until a later stage um you know Where do they come from? Mm-hmm. Why are they perhaps mm-hmm. behaving like that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think there would ever be a time where you would you would say, okay, I think this isn't good. Not just that this isn't good, but where you might really step in and say, you can't really be friends with that child. Do you, can you imagine an instance where that could happen yeah yeah no i can i th- i would really hope that we be very careful how we do that mm-hmm. um, if you do it in the wrong way mm-hmm. you disqualify when the right time mm-hmm. comes mm-hmm. so you need to be really wise right. and you right. need to be able to do it but yes, yes mm-hmm. if your child's well-being is really mm-hmm. compromised and in danger you step in and then mm-hmm. at that stage of the battle it doesn't matter how your child feel about you mm. and whatever you pray that right mm. in the year to come. Mm. But if it's a line that's crossed, mm-hmm. you you mm. step in, you do whatever it takes, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it might cost you also a lot. Mm-hmm. But that's also the responsibility of being a parent. That's part of yeah. the ownership that you take mm-hmm. for that child. You know that you mm-hmm. fight for that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did you? Um, I'm just curious. Uh, ever see? Or sometimes we talk with our kids about this, but just holding so much importance with the that the friend, almost like an idolizing of relationships of friends, right? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if maybe people might uh, 
relate to that as well. Mm -hmm. you know, kids wanting so much the important friends. I guess this is this is all related. Mm -hmm. you know, this well, I definitely do think mm -hmm. that teenagers, mm -hmm. in, in obviously every stage of life, appreciates mm -hmm. enjoys friendships. But mm -hmm. teenagers in particular, they have a um, friendships have a very strong weight to them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of their you know, their choices of lifestyle, sometimes worldview, mm -hmm. is being shaped by their friends. And so mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some parents who think it's great, and some parents who think that's my greatest struggle, is with my teenager's friends, uh, choice of friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, But you're right, though. I think to know how to go into those mm -hmm. unique situations. Mm -hmm. It's really different sometimes case by case and then child by child. Mm -hmm. So it's, there is no clear cut steadfast rule of you always do it this way mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. So everything is relational, right? Mm -hmm. It takes us back to the husband and wife. Mm -hmm. the, I, I say to the guy, the moment you've got to say to your wife, why don't you submit? Man, you, you are the one who's, mm. who's wrong here. Something mm. happened to the relationship yes. mm. and you are primarily responsible for the relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't now bring in the law and force it to submit to you. Sort out your relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there mustn't be a place mm -hmm. where it must mm -hmm. happen, but I'm saying mm -hmm. you are now negatively right. using right. the law in that yes. sense. And the same for our children. If you've got to lay down the law, you know, you could say this will not happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it can never happen. There's times mm -hmm. like your your nation was just locked up for mm -hmm. 40 days or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was probably the right decision because it was a big enough threat to say to all of you, get in the house, lock mm -hmm. and nobody works. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that every day. Mm -hmm. you've, got to, you've got to have confidence in that your leadership in your country will only say it mm -hmm. if it's really necessary. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that goes mm -hmm. still right down to our children. Mm -hmm. Now, to be honest, I watch kids, especially now that we are grandparents, but I watch mm -hmm. teenagers all the time. And so I will watch a young boy, 14, Jack's age, 14, mm -hmm. 15, 16, I will watch them in a Christian home. And I watch him when the guys go to church. And I will see, quite frankly, he's not really mm. present in the worship or whatever. Mm, right. I won't make too much of a big deal of that. You know, I, that's a hard thing. Mm. He, he's at least going with you. Mm -hmm. He's still part of your family. He's respecting mm. that. But you can't say you must do it like that because now you're putting a law on it. And you, but a rhythm to have a rhythm to say mm. Sundays as a family we worship, and that's why I've been quite outspoken about mothers having children and they don't go to church for a year, or mm. boys playing soccer on a Sunday and we only go to mm. church once a month. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to your child? Mm -hmm. You're telling your child church is like soccer, you go when you like it. Mm -hmm. So there must be a rhythm that's non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Your child cannot say, I'm not eating before I go to school. You will say, you will eat because you need to have food. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about that. Mm -hmm. But the hard attitude of a, a teenage boy that's not really mm -hmm. participating in a family devotion. Mm -hmm. Be gentle. Mm -hmm. Win him mm -hmm. over in his heart. Mm -hmm. and, and, and minister to his need even if he doesn't minister back, mm -hmm. it will come. He's busy figuring out life. Mm -hmm. He's busy trying to work out, do I really want to be like my dad? Do I, you know, and, and, and I think we need to be wise mm -hmm. in allowing the kids mm -hmm. to work that out. Mm -hmm. I have found that, um, and I think, I think this is true, um, that so many of the challenges that we face as parents with teenagers is because not because that just began in their teen years, but it really began early on when you're setting the foundation of um, really loving a child, but showing them that you are, you're, you're in that place to lead and shepherd them. Mm -hmm. And that, that comes with 
you're going to need to follow me and trust me. I'm going to love you and support you. And I'm going to explain to you and share with you and teach you and guide you. I'm also going to discipline you. And I'm also going to show you that there's a structure and that structure is important. And there's a rhythm <clears throat> and those rhythms, when we sort of lose sight of that, and I've always thought this, that if when you parent, that parenting, it's not that you can't recapture um, those teen years, but if you have started off really without actually implanting a heart of wanting to you know, teach and guide and shepherd your child, mm -hmm. it, it really is you're starting at a deficit once you hit the teen years. Because if they've been in a long standing, you know, since they were four years old, they were disrespectful. And, um, they, you know, I've seen little children who will hit their parents, you know, just like slap their parents mm -hmm. and the parent won't do anything, you know, and, and, uh, what do you expect that child to be like when they're a teenager? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, so a lot of the, the patterns have already been set at the youngest of ages. They're just living the way they've always lived. And by the time they're hitting teenage years where they're beginning to explore adulthood, the transition to adulthood that's still there, that heart, and it's never been dealt with. And so suddenly a, a parent who, they might say, oh, it's so cute that they hit me like that. And you know, when a little baby's going, no, no, and there's nothing, it can seem cute, it can mm -hmm. seem not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. but you just leave that alone and it just keeps going, going. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they're not just giving little taps, they're, uh, you know, it can get pretty rebellious. But I always tend to think that that rebellion you saw it at early ages. It's just been left unchecked, and slowly but surely, uh, we, you know, our kids know we're having this time, and uh, you know, and they said they really did. They said, "Oh, feel free to share any stories about us," <laughs> and um, I'm thankful for that because they, in fact, they will say things like. I won't say they, they thanked us for disciplining them, but they, in a sense, they did, in a way, right? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. they did say, oh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I would, you disciplined us when we were younger. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have been mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Like, they don't look at that and say, you were abusive, mm -hmm. and, or we hate you. And mm -hmm. If you do it in love and grace and mercy, mm -hmm. you're hugging them, you're caring for them, you're showing them, here's why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're we want to free you so that you're going to enjoy more of the years later. Then there's those teen years don't have to be this terrible time. I feel like people think mm -hmm. of it as this dark period of a person's life. Mm -hmm. now, can I just, just yes. I'm just yes. aware that this is um, maybe this is an hour and maybe some people have to lock off. I'm not sure, but I just want to say one yes. thing that I mm -hmm. want to make sure it is mm -hmm. clear. If you've been around long enough, you will know. Um, you will know families where uh, people have five children, and three of them would become the most amazing, amazing followers of Jesus. One would be completely indifferent, and one would turn their back on Christ, yes. like heartbroken stuff. Yes. I want to just say to all those parents, you. You're a human being. Ultimately, you if you anything like me, like me, you're gonna make many, many, many mistakes. But you doing well and you making the odd mistakes here and there is not um, the end result of your child. Mm -hmm. I know parents said that a lousy job. And their children are now my leaders in hands. Mm -hmm. I know parents who seriously neglected their children. And today they are the most amazing believers, caring mm -hmm. for many people. And I know people who did amazing jobs and their children are far away from Christ today. Mm -hmm. So in all the things that we share tonight, mm -hmm. which is crucial because we need to know everything mm -hmm. we can against in this tough road that we walk, mm -hmm. ultimately, 
you cannot take responsibility for that. Some children that now look like they are going to become angels even before they die, <laughs> <laughs> they might actually turn their back on your yeah. face. Yes. Yeah. And some that looks like they're in a pit of hell at the moment mm -hmm. might become some of the greatest Christian leaders that we've seen yeah. in this generation. Yeah. So first of all, never rest on your laurels. Be mm -hmm. on your knees mm -hmm. for your children. Every mm -hmm. morning, Carol and I intercede for every one of our children. And All of them and grandchildren, mm -hmm. and um, we know all of us are one step away from disaster mm -hmm. and we're one step away from the grace of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, I think it's just so important to take that message of you there's no condemnation, mm -hmm. but there's also no credit to you. Mm -hmm. The condemnation doesn't belong to you, and the credit mm -hmm. doesn't belong mm -hmm. to you. All the glory to Jesus, mm -hmm. and those of the children that are far away right now. We will fight for them to the very end. Mm -hmm. We will pray and trust and believe that God's promises, yes and amen. So I just wanted to get yes. that out of the way yes. because mm -hmm. I think yes. it's a crucially important um, thing when we speak well, about that's, children. That's the challenge that I think one of the questions came up was the, you know, how do you show grace and still mm -hmm. teach obedience? You know, how do you... Mm -hmm. Salvation belongs to the Lord. I, I always go back to that verse because in the end, no matter how well you parent, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you, uh, you try to guide, and no matter how kind, and salvation belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think you gave a, a really great exhortation to recognize that not everybody, you know, just because mm -hmm. your parents are terrible doesn't mean that you're bound to that. Mm -hmm. If you're parents were divorced and your fa your family's mm. a family of divorce doesn't mean that okay well you're gonna get a divorce as mm. it's it's um it really is grace it really is mm. the lord in operation so you know thank you for that mm. yeah yeah and i mean god gave us a will and a choice mm -hmm. and to do his will and to choose right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if we don't do his will and we choose wrong mm -hmm. he's still gracious enough Yes. to be able to take us a path mm -hmm. until such time mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, you do his will and make the right mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. It's not that he forgets about you. And I right. think for us to understand that our kids as well, we all make mistakes. The kids mm -hmm. can make mistakes, um, you know, mm -hmm. and how do we, we learn from that? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you fall, Jesus holds his hand and come, can mm -hmm. pull you up. Mm -hmm. As parents, our kids fall, <laughs> Come, let's hold you up. Mm. Why are you what did I say this morning? I am. I was the biggest. <laughs> we were, we were talking about enough. something, and I said to Kelly, "I was the biggest scumball." Oh ah, yes, <laughs> <laughs> scumball. <Yeah. laughs> I think that kind of uh, dependence on the Lord and really taking our eyes off of ourselves and giving all glory mm -hmm. to the Lord and humbling ourselves and saying, we need you mm -hmm. for the lives of our children, for mm -hmm. their spiritual salvation. Mm -hmm. And we, we can, you know, pray for them, show them, and constantly bring them to show him, right? Mm -hmm. but, but their acceptance of him, that, that really has to be a miraculous transformative work by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and I think when we depend on the Lord for that, it really breaks idolatry, right? That's because good. Mm, I, I, it yeah. doesn't depend on me. Mm -hmm. And I can't do it. And the good I do or the bad that I did, mm -hmm. it is all up to the Lord. And we will try to be faithful. We will try mm -hmm. to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And again, we will fail. But he shows us grace. And we, we keep on moving forward depending mm -hmm. on him. But and I think that's that's our calling as parents, being faithful in his house, mm -hmm. right? In, in serving. Yeah. As as Moses was faithful mm -hmm. in the house, then Jesus was faithful as a mm -hmm. son over the house, that we would just be faithful mm -hmm. in serving our children or serving in the house. Mm -hmm. But um that's good. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, one person asked actually in the chat, they asked, uh, 
So what, how, what do you do when husband and wife have a different view of how you raise the children, even spiritually? And uh, it's difficult, you know, because they have very divergent views. Well, what, what do you do in that instance? Especially if, let's say, it's um, the wife and maybe even the husband's a non-believer and they have a very particular view of raising the children and obviously you want to raise them in the Lord. Any thoughts about that? That's a tough one. Well, I think if it's not a different someone you married, then you've married a clone or something. <laughs> right? So I think it's common. I think there are some pitfalls in that. And, and Kelly and I, again, it brought tension between us, and we had to deal with that. Um, this is when you, you mean when you first were married? Yeah. When, when you first Well, we've only been married once, but... <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I <laughs> Give me a minute. Every now and again, you'll be thinking, oh, nice, you don't feel you marry me. Yeah, I do that. I do that. <laughs> Just want to say, she would still say yes if I asked her. <laughs> um, but look, I think yes, yes, a pitfall with that. Of course, it's going to be different. Let's not even consider the husband that's an unbeliever. Just Sure. There, there is going to be. Now, here's the challenge, and especially, it's often that the child will trust the mother, who's sometimes softer, mm -hmm. you know, at least appear to be softer and mm -hmm. more approachable than the father. And so the child might share with the mother and say, please don't tell that. Mm -hmm. Or the mother might even think, I better keep it away from mm -hmm. George or mm -hmm. Sam, or whatever, because it might... I think that's where it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So Ken and I had to grind this one out. Mm -hmm. We had to come to a place. And it took a, it took mm -hmm. a number of years. It was not easy because mm -hmm. I think Carolyn felt even an obligation towards the child. And, she, and sometimes she wanted to protect me even. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, George don't need this on his plate also. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I said to her, you do that, you undermine one flesh, you undermine my view, my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so as tough, as tough as it is, you've got to come to me and I've got to come to you mm -hmm. when I know something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's, uh, sometimes she might keep it back because she might think we're going to not, Agreed. I'm going to yeah. respond in a different way than she <laughs> wants to respond. Mm -hmm. But other times she may want to predict me or the child or whatever, but I just don't think you should. So if we disagree, then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do we deal with that? Mm -hmm. I think that's the question that right. we need to. And for me, it's just to go right back to what is, what is the most basic foundation? What is God's word saying? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and try to figure it out from there, go mm -hmm. up layer by layer mm -hmm. and come to a conclusion. If mm -hmm. we can't, then we, we don't make a decision until we agree or until mm -hmm. Carolyn would say to me, well, you tell me how mm -hmm. to guide this thing further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question came in uh, to the chat. So it's about the teen years again. Um, how do you engage your kids in teen years when he or she starts to show isolation behaviors, such as closing the door, mm -hmm. not engaging in conversation, et cetera? I think another thing is um, you talked about rhythms earlier, and um, I know some parents who, for example, if their teenager doesn't even want to go to church on Sunday mm -hmm. anymore, they'll just say, okay. Yeah. So they've even lost the most yeah. foundational of rhythms. Yeah. And so isolating themselves even more, not yeah. just from their parents, but from the Lord, yeah. from God's yeah. people. What are your thoughts about that? I have some thoughts, but I'd love to hear what you both think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes when the kids are withdrawing and doing that, there's um, many times other things that the child is trying to work through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you've got to create that open space again, mm -hmm. you know, and to build into your child. Mm 
to try and understand why mm -hmm. they want the door closed, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the questions that we were looking at earlier on is, you know, all the different gadgets and mm -hmm. what can right. be seen and what access children yes. have to what, you know. Yes. And is there something that yes. the child is secretly wanting to be involved in, yes. but feeling guilty, therefore closing the door so that the parents don't see what's going on behind right, the closed door. Right. Um, and to, That's okay. to acknowledge that you see a problem, you see something, and mm -hmm. you know, to build that relationship in with the child. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And say, I can see something's yes. wrong, you know, yes. this kind of thing. Um, I don't know what That's else. okay. And, and for us, uh, we will, you cannot have a policy where the child decides, I'm in my room and you don't come in. Yeah. No. Then I'll, have access I'll to break the lockdown. I will go in whenever I need to go in or feel, but respectfully and gently. But if it's a crisis, I want to go in. So um, I spoke a bit about the guy from the US that came to South Africa who wrote the book, I, th I think oh, it's yes, called yes. Digital Edition, mm -hmm. where he speaks about the same part of the brain mm -hmm. that cocaine, it, that's the mm -hmm. same part of your brain that gets attacked mm -hmm. through so, uh, screen time. Mm -hmm. Well, pornography, not just mm -hmm. pornography, but your addiction to so screen time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I want to speak into that at the mm -hmm. moment because I think often that's why a child will go into the room is to be alone and to disappear in their own digital world because mm -hmm. that's an escape from um, having to, to deal with life. Mm -hmm. So this guy say, on research, he say, if your child has got a, a, a mobile phone that has got to access to an internet mm -hmm. and that child is behind a closed door, he said, overwhelming evidence, not just unheathens, Christians, overwhelming evidence show they do three things. They text mm -hmm. each other, they play games and they watch pornography. I know we don't like to hear that. Mm -hmm. Guys, go and look it up for yourself. Go and find mm -hmm. reliable like Barnabas um, research people, papers, go and read their papers. That's a Christian organization doing research in a very professional way. Go and read the numbers of your children that's engaged in that kind of material. So they say a child with a phone should never, regardless of the age, have a closed door policy where you can't walk in. Mm -hmm. You should be able to walk in at any moment. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there should be a, a clear thing on your Wi-Fi that blocks, blocks and you should be able to do a history check on your child's phone. Mm -hmm. Just like your wife should mm -hmm. be able to do a history check on your phone mm -hmm. whenever she wants to. Mm -hmm. And um, the husband and the wife. And the husband <laughs> and the wife. But you mm -hmm. cannot leave your child behind a closed door mm -hmm. with a cell phone and a Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. you, you lining them up. Yes. And it's not because they're bad. They're trying to find life. Mm -hmm. And you've got to play an active role in them, protecting them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I do think that that almost there's a sense that, well, I love my child, therefore I'm going to trust mm -hmm. my child. It doesn't work that way, yeah. you know? Yeah. I always, I would, I remember um, we've had probably multiple, I would say with each one of our children, we've had one of these discovery times where we have caught them looking at something, reading something, doing something that we thought this is a sin against God. And every one of those times we've had that, um, they would say something like, do you trust? I thought you trusted me. Mm -hmm. and my response always to that is I don't trust myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I don't trust myself, why would I trust you? Yes. This mm -hmm. is not about trust. Mm -hmm. This is about desire to want, the greatest joy possible and it's not to do whatever i want flee from mm. sin yeah mm. it's i want freedom from from sin is not misery and enslavement it's mm. it's true freedom mm -hmm. freedom to sin is enslavement mm. and the the idea that well i don't trust my child we 
we have to realize who we are. And the more we're able to do that, it's not about trust at that point. So it's such, so much more about what you said about love, about being able to have a, a place where you want that type of engagement. Like they sh that child should want engagement. And if they don't, there's something much more amiss mm. than, oh, the door is closed, or I want to listen to my music, or I want to watch mm -hmm. this thing on my screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. I think it uh, goes back to the boundaries that um, we started with, right? When you were yeah. talking about how you only need boundaries. And then also the idea of entitlement. When we give things to our kids, do they feel entitled? This is mine. It's my privacy. You yes. don't have a right to come to you know, my private stuff. But instead of that, is it, again, like you were sharing, are we all part of the family? So we um, know people who have the same... Um, we call it security password <laughs> to get in to yes. things. The whole family has the same password. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. we so do. we so. all know each other's password. Uh -huh. It's usually just one. There's yeah. you can't yeah. have your own password yes. Yes. because yeah. it should be open, of course. Mm -hmm. In that sense, yeah. Um, yeah. like no one's phone should be locked out from everybody else. No one's mm -hmm. uh, computer should be locked mm -hmm. out. It. Mm -hmm. So the question, I think. It's so easy to think that the most loving thing is to let them have this type of privacy. But I, I do think it goes against scripture. It goes against the, the best possible thing for that person. Everything that you're mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was thinking what George said as well is you need to respect their privacy with other records. You know, mm -hmm. if they're getting changed, right? Mm -hmm. You know yes. that kind of thing. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but definitely not from these things that we're talking about. Yes. Because some people say, "Well, you know, privacy is private. If you can't mm -hmm. just walk in if a child's getting dressed." Yes, you know, um, that kind of thing. So that's a different yes. privacy. Yes, yes, you know, yes. And for people to understand that is different. Yes, mm -hmm. and you know, to be aware of that, obviously, yes. as parents. Yes. But to know when the other privacy is there yes. to be able to react. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> yes. Um, we, uh, we have a few more questions. Anger. Anger. So here's a question. Sometimes I get so angry at my children, then I feel so guilty afterwards. How do I break this cycle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just tell you what happened? I think I touched in Africa with the grandmothers. You know, you will meet the most beautiful grandmothers. Oh my goodness. Do they love Jesus? Do they live by faith? Mm -hmm. And then you will find out that they physically abuse the grandchildren. Like they would take a stick and beat them mm -hmm. up. And mm -hmm. you will go there and say, Granny, I can't believe it. Tell me they're lying. It's not possible that you can do something like this. And then she will cry. She will say to me, George, it's absolutely the truth. And I don't know why I do it. I love my children so much. But I catch myself doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, that mm -hmm. is a much more extreme case than what we heard the question now on. But I want to take it back to the wounded people wound others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she, when she's wounded, she inflicts that wounds on those that she loves the most. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a crazy thing about mm -hmm. being wounded. Mm -hmm. And how we prevent that is not to say to her, don't hit the child, mm -hmm. but to say to her, you are wounded. You buried your children, Granny. If I had to do it, I would also beat up my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's how what people do who are so deeply wounded. Let's deal with your wounds. Because mm -hmm. when we deal with your wounds, mm -hmm. you will not beat up your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And then we go to a program and we help them to deal with their wounds. Mm -hmm. And I think when I hear something like this, uh, my thinking is, you know what? A child cannot make you, nobody can make you angry. How do I make you, do I switch you on or I can't make you angry. Mm -hmm. You decide to become angry. Mm -hmm. You see something, and your response, mm -hmm. because you are insecure or mm -hmm. something in you, nothing mm -hmm. to do yes. with the situation, mm -hmm. something in you triggers off an emotion that spills out as anger. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to, 
I take that back to yourself and say, and for example, this person that wrote it, I'm just giving an example, might have been abused physically by a parent or his parents when he did something like that. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he was beaten up. Mm -hmm. um, and so he still carried that wound. Mm -hmm. So when he sees his child does that, Mm -hmm. The anger towards his own father is now yes. spilling onto his child. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage that person to go and find out what honestly is triggered off your mm -hmm. anger. Mm -hmm. And that guilt that you have is because you know that that child mm -hmm. wasn't really the reason. That mm -hmm. child is just your object of casting your anger. Mm -hmm. But you've got to find out what is happening here mm -hmm. that's provoking that negative yes. emotion in you. Mm -hmm. And when you find out? Well, then you go to the healer, right? <laughs> yes. What role does your spouse play in that? Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, I have to wound, it's coming out. Um, and it's interesting because then Sewell will say, you know, Sam, I noticed you were angry towards so-and-so child. And my first instinct is to say, what are you talking about? I wasn't angry. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, it's hard. It's it's there's a you know there's some mechanism in there that is has not dealt with my own soul. You know? mm -hmm. Any thoughts for that? Well, if I may say, because I've I had to go through that, and so there was a time where I not only spoke to Catalan but to my children, mm -hmm. and I had to say to them, these negative responses that you saw from me. It's because I am bleeding inside. Mm. Because this was where I came from. Mm. This is what happened to me. This is the, the impact that had on me mm. is what I'm spilling on you guys now. Mm -hmm. But now that I can see it, now we pray and we trust Jesus for that healing mm -hmm. and you hold me accountable mm -hmm. that I don't go and wallow in it. Mm -hmm. Because you see, we, we can run to our anger and our pain mm -hmm. and wallow in it because mm -hmm. it, we're addicted to pain. Mm -hmm. We like it to get angry or to hurt. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes to get healed is actually what we don't want. Mm -hmm. We've got a bit of an idol in us mm -hmm. to go there. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need your family to say, but you said we understood that pain, but now mm -hmm. you've got to grow now. Mm -hmm. Get out of it. Mm -hmm. I, I know for myself too, I feel like um, God had to show me how much I wanted and felt entitled to, deserved love from my family. And if I felt unloved or unappreciated, then I would get angry. <laughs> and, yeah. it, and it was really, um, it was really startling. Yeah. And um, so... I mean, I was really grateful because Sam helped me to see this and just praying through it, working through it. And I really felt like that was an idol. I had to die to it. I, I, I need love from the Lord ultimately to fill me. Mm. It's not something that I feel like I deserve from my family. And I think sometimes respect can be something that we feel like I'm entitled mm. to this. And my kids better show me this. If they don't, oh boy, they're... They're mm. going to know. Yeah. And um, maybe fathers go through that mm -hmm. too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think everyone goes through that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, I have a few more questions. I know it's getting late, but I, I'd like to cover these. In a, um, one is, let's talk a little bit about birth order because that's such a significant aspect of parenting, which is, especially if you have you know, two, three children, two or more, actually. And there's an older child and, and a younger child. And sometimes there's a middle child. How do you guard against the middle child syndrome? And how do you parent in a way in which each child is counted as significant for who they are and not necessarily for the order of their birth? Novel.
think for me, you know, so many people do say the middle child syndrome. And I personally don't believe in the middle child syndrome. You were the only child. I was the only child. So I was yeah, the first child. Yeah, the only child syndrome. <laughs> Spoiled brain. I was, uh, so I was the first, the middle, and the last. Um, but I think to, to just realize that each child is different. And I think George mentioned it earlier on because we did speak about something like this earlier. And to understand that each one, regardless of who mm -hmm. he or she is, mm -hmm. each of your children mm -hmm. are different. Mm -hmm. They're a different human being. They've got different characteristics. Mm -hmm. And how do you develop each of those characteristics mm -hmm. and attitudes and values in each child mm -hmm. appreciating them yes. knowing them that mm -hmm. you don't love them differently okay. that they are each one is special to yes. you and not mm -hmm. specially in yes. different ways yes all the same yes. ways you know and how to develop each one yes. right. so one may be a bookworm and how do you develop that the other yes. child may be very sporty right. mm -hmm. but you know and not to say that oh, you know you the middle one, you, you or you the last one, you yes. or you the first. You've got to take responsibility. Yes. Yes. The first child always is the eldest, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. and will we will expect um, more responsibility from the eldest because they're the first, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But the same thing when the next child is that age, we'll expect the same responsibility, mm -hmm. whether it's chores right. that are given. Right. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so when I, it's a way of learning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I traveled, started traveling a bit more, and we would praise a family before I go, I would always take Joshua. Now, he's the youngest, because mm -hmm. Nikki wasn't there. He was only six years old or seven years old. Mm -hmm. I'll put him on my lap in front of the family, and then I'll say to him, I want you to listen carefully now. <laughs> yeah. You're the man of the house now. You know? yeah. I'm leaving. Like, yeah. You're, you're going to have to support your mother. You know, like, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man of the house. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it was always so funny to watch him. Like, he's looking at his sisters. Can you guys hear what this is? <laughs> watch out. I'm in charge. But, you know, I think everybody could see through. Really, yeah. through it. But mm -hmm. the, the thing I was showing you is hard. Yes. That as a man, you must yes. develop the ability to say the back stops with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to mm -hmm. hide away. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to teach Joshua that mm -hmm. from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Because that is the role that yes. God has anointed him. Yes. And I wanted to bring him up in that. Mm -hmm. So he might have been the youngest, but I had a certain um, way that I speak to, spoke to Joshua that was different from the way I may have spoken to mm. Nikki or Sammy, or mm. because I was trying to, to groom him in what role he had mm. to take one day. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not too faced about the oldest or the youngest per mm. se, um, but it is more, how did I want Mary to do grow up as a woman of Christ, mm. Sammy to grow up to, let's mm. say, I want you to be like a woman of Christ. Mm. Um, and Nikki, um, and for Joshua, how to be a man in Christ. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I yes. think it's just that from a young mm -hmm. age, try yes. to mm -hmm. give that vision to them mm -hmm. and what yes. that means. Yes. 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 Okay. You know, when you said earlier, uh, very early on when we first started, the idea that our identity and worth is not based on our achievements. And I think very similarly, our identity and worth is not based on what order Yes. We're born in. Yes. And whenever actually it's built on that, it leads to big problems. And I think we as parents do that in very subtle ways. It's not blatant, but it, it is the, you know, um, you're older than him, so you must share everything with him. Mm -hmm. you know, and so they, that, that younger child grows up thinking, I'm entitled. Mm -hmm. And the other child is thinking, I always have to give and sacrifice. And we base that on being older versus, you know, sharing is a wonderful thing. We actually have to teach that. Mm -hmm. But we teach sharing not on the basis of your birth order, but on the basis of your new birth. Mm 
or on the basis of the fact that we're followers of Christ. And actually, it's a blessing to share, regardless of your birth order. So share because, uh, because of Jesus. I, one of the things that I, sort of uh, another metaphor is um, quite often people wonder, and I'm sure with your kids as well, wonder, oh, how, how, do, uh, how do your kids like being pastor's kids? Mm-hmm. And we try to tell our kids, hey, like if, if someone who knew comes to the church, I don't say, go introduce yourself to that child because you're the pastor's kid. And I know pastor's <laughs> families and pastor's uh, a wife or a mother or father who will actually use, because you're a pastor's kid, you need to always introduce yourself to the new person. Versus, you know what? Jesus welcomed the stranger. Mm-hmm. Go and welcome the stranger because Jesus welcomes you when you were a stranger once. How much more powerful it is when we actually use the gospel, which is the main motivator. And so then they grow up saying, oh, I, I should do these things because they're a response to what Christ has done for me. Mm-hmm. Versus, oh, you're the oldest. You're the youngest. You're the middle. Mm-hmm. I think when, when we start aligning ourselves not on the basis of these really faulty uh, identifiers mm-hmm. and rather place it on our identity in Christ, then it really is a much more powerful motivation mm-hmm. as to why we do something. And then also explaining always. And I, I think that's so important to our kids mm-hmm. is that they're, even at the youngest of ages, you might think that, oh, my child, but they're only three years old. They can't understand that. But a six-year-old saying, you're the man of the house. Here's why. They're going to grow up remembering that. Mm-hmm. You know, They might not fully understand it at six, at three, but as they hear it more and they're, they're being, it's being reinforced slowly but surely, one day it will dawn on them. Wow, I have to take care of my, my sisters. I have to take care of women. If you're a guy, and something I've had a conversation with Jack, we, uh, let's say about a few years ago, where I had to say, all right, Jack, you know, it's great that when you were young and you and your sister Elizabeth would wrestle on the floor and like hit each other but you're, you can't be hitting girls anymore. And here's why. You have to treat them with respect and you have to protect them. And so all these things are conversations that are so important to have. And you can have them at the youngest of ages. Yeah. And it's not based on birth order or what your father does for a living or because you're a pastor or a missionary's family. I really think that's why so many PKs and MKs rebel and hate being mm. Because it's always, oh, because you're that, you have to act like this. But rather it should be, we all must act like this because it's an overflow of what God has done for us. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. That's good. So I, I just see that consistently all around in parenting and life. I think uh, parenting is such an amazing uh, tool that the Lord can use in our lives to make us really honest with him. Don't, don't you feel that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it makes, it's very, very humbling. <laughs> it's, very, it's humbling. It's humbling. Like, <laughs> it's humbling. Um, like, who am I really before the Lord? And because in my relationship with my children, it, it's coming out. So what, what does that say about mm-hmm. what's going on with me and the Lord, mm-hmm. first and foremost? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just... It is extremely humbling. Mm. Yeah. I need to ask a couple more questions because they just seem pretty significant for the people who ask them. Um, how do you help your teenage daughter who struggles with body image and self-worth? She thinks she is ugly and fat even though she is not. We talked about this before, so do you both, well, all, all of you share a little bit. Uh, that one is um it can be a tough one and again you know trying to understand if your daughter does think like that why you know especially if you've had a home where you've been open and honest and you've allowed a door to be open for any kind of conversation or you know things like that and if your daughter is like that um, 
to sit with her and to try and understand what peer pressure is saying, you know, what people are saying, mm -hmm. um, maybe what boys have said, mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of thing, because, you know, the, the daughter could maybe be a little bit chubby or could have a nice figure or depends what you classify as chubby, chubby and a, mm -hmm. a good figure. You know, Barbie used to be the idol for many girls. You always mm -hmm. had to have a Barbie-shaped figure. Mm -hmm. And um, because they said Barbie would have the perfect figure. And many girls want to be like Barbie. Because if you like Barbie, then you will be loved. You'll have lots of friends at school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those mm -hmm. kind yes. of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's huge because you need to, again, build that relationship. Mm -hmm. Have that relationship with your daughter. Mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. able to um, speak in a way and minister mm -hmm. in a way to her that you can get to the root of it. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. And again, you are beautiful. You may think that you're fat, but you are not. Mm -hmm. You know? And over and over, mm -hmm. we're all made in Christ's image mm -hmm. yes. and how to really minister to her. Mm -hmm. And of course, pray, 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 pray. Yes. While you're speaking, your husband is praying. <laughs> you know? But at the same time, for the dad yes. to speak to the daughter, yes. you yes. know, and from the dad's perspective, yes. just, you know, yes. to build into that relationship yes. so that the daughter's got the mom's perspective yes. mm -hmm. and the, the mm -hmm. dad's perspective mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you want, you know, they want to push you away and things yes. like that. And mm -hmm. it is tough, but there are kids we've got to, mm -hmm. you know, build into their lives, encourage mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And walk the path with them mm -hmm. and try and understand what the root is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and for them to be able to mm -hmm. look at it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Yes. From the dad's perspective, because, you know, we always hear, and Sue and I have talked, Sue will say this to me quite often, not often, but here and there saying how significant it is for a girl to have a father who actually is actually finds their daughter attractive and, and you know, obviously in a, affirm, not, mm. attract, not attractive in a bad way, mm. but um, affirming mm. and, mm. you know, comp compliments her mm. and is a part of her life as affectionate. Mm -hmm. What do you think? How right. significant is that? No, I think it's huge. It's kettle and shedding. I, mean, I felt the heaviness in my heart nearly <laughs> because she she said so many things. Mm. And I think we can go so much deeper, mm -hmm. but it's even a taboo in our culture. Mm. Um, so yes, a number of things. One, I, I think the dad's role is incredibly mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. The way that the uh, girl understands how the father sees her and instill, like I said to Joshua, mm -hmm. you are the man. Mm -hmm. I should speak into my girls from mm -hmm. a young age, you know. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the words that I use is incredibly powerful on how she will see herself in a physical way and in the other way. Now, so that, that is, we understand that, right? That mm -hmm. makes sense, we understand that. And the question that was asked here, I understand, it's, mm -hmm. it's, that question was the child is influenced by negative peer pressure mm -hmm. and we need to just take it back to what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, and this is the more unspoken side, mm -hmm. there are times that our children are in very bad, unhealthy eating habits. Mm -hmm. We see it happens mm -hmm. in front of us in our kitchen. We see mm -hmm. this child is getting out of proportion mm -hmm. um, in the eating habits and in size and something. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's your, it's as much your responsibility to get into that also. Mm. Contextualize it with any other indulgence. We won't allow it. Mm. And so I think, I want to just gently put it out there, because mm. I think both sides are important. The one that we spoke yeah. about here, mm. and the eating disorders. Yes. I'm not even talking about anorexia things. I'm mm. talking now about... Um, uh, if you overeat and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and to yeah. say it's nearly a culture was created that you, you don't have a right to speak into me like that. Mm -hmm. I can eat this if I want to like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. 
-hmm. I think it's not good for your spiritual life. It's not good for your mm -hmm. physical life. It's not mm -hmm. good for your future. It's not good for your health. Mm -hmm. And so if that does happen, mm -hmm. raise the flag early and don't address the weight per se, but address the habit, the rhythm. Always mm -hmm. go back to the mm -hmm. habit, the mm -hmm. rhythm, the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we do things? Mm -hmm. What keeps us healthy and strong? Mm -hmm. And take the child back to that. Mm -hmm. I think um, often when we overeat, for example, mm -hmm. it is as a result of something else. Mm -hmm. So there's anxiety or there's mm -hmm. a disorder or a misunderstanding, a distortion of a mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. that takes you to, I'm not trying to simplify, there are complex mm -hmm. issues, but I'm mm -hmm. talking in general. Mm -hmm. We've got the responsibility as parents and especially a father to instill the beauty of our child mm -hmm. and our worth. Mm -hmm. And we, at the same hand, we've got the responsibility as parents to make sure our children's eating habits are healthy mm -hmm. and good. Mm -hmm. And we should step into both mm -hmm. actively mm -hmm. at the early stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's, like you say, you focus on the obese side or putting on weight. But I think also it's that where they think that they are right. obese, yes. but they are actually but anorexic or yes. yeah. um, you know, yes. and you know, doing having those issues and mm. just saying that I'm so fat, I'm so ugly, yeah. you know, mm. that yes. that kind of yes. thing as well. Yes. Mm. And mm. Yes. you know, just to build in yes. her self worth, right. you know, right. yeah. that. Yes. She is your daughter and you know, yes. so it comes from this side you look out but yeah. that side yeah. as well. Because yes. you know? it might not even be about weight, it could be oh the size of my nose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. way uh, my hair is mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. my forehead is too pro protruding, mm -hmm. whatever. And and I do think that this is where I I just so firmly believe that if we have a a very strong view of our identity in Christ. I mean, that is mm -hmm. such the key is mm -hmm. once we place our worth and value in Christ alone, yes. then we really can be freed from yeah. the way that mm -hmm. the world thinks mm -hmm. is what beauty is. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's where prayer comes in because mm -hmm. you're praying ultimately for their soul. Mm -hmm. You're praying that this child would come to truly know that they were a daughter of the king. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when they know that, then they're not wrapped up with, well, you know, I need to get plastic surgery because my cheeks mm. are too, I mean, it's just, and it's tragic, yeah. you know, that mm -hmm. social media plays into that too. Right? Mm -hmm. And bullying. And for the boys, mm -hmm. bullying, mm -hmm. you, know, yeah, you yes. should look as a boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, put your identity in this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I'm wondering if you should um, answer the question about, um, Discipline for the younger kids yeah. and how that, okay. that yeah. is. Uh, Maybe we'll ask one point. more question from this sheet. And if anyone has, has any last questions, you can just put it on the chat. Otherwise, we'll close it after this. Um, yeah, Because I asked the question, because we've addressed a lot of questions for the teen years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that, like I said, a lot of when I'm looking at the people who are on, they have a lot of young children. Mm -hmm. So maybe one question is about discipline. How do you discipline your child? Especially, let's talk about maybe not the teen years. Or we could talk about the teen years as well, but really when they're young, what does that look like? Well, it's nice to be a grandparent. <laughs> <laughs> you just well. you play, and when, when it gets a bit rough or smelly or anything, then you say, Mom. Daddy, <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's oh, what a blessing. So this there's a light at the end of the time. <laughs> Hang in when your children have children, you get them back big time. <laughs> you play with them. And then you see your children's faces going. Yeah. And when your children come and ask you for advice, you just go, I don't know. You never listen to me, so why does that <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, just back to the Bible, say, um, if we are legitimate children, we will be disciplined. Mm -hmm. It is <laughs> counterculture, right? You know, yes. we spoke a lot about the culture tonight. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Kelly and I, it, um, we always spoke about, we spoke of Sam and Shua earlier about 
when we discipline our children, we've got one golden rule is that we don't do it while we're angry. Mm -hmm. And so we would have a rule where we would say to the children, go into your room and close the door. And sometimes we'll wait for two hours before mm -hmm. we go in mm -hmm. and sit down and talk to them and discuss it. But we will not react in anger. We don't want discipline to be yes. connected to impulsive yes. outbursts yes. of angry words. And half of them you wish you never said mm -hmm. and half of them are true. Mm -hmm. Because that's got no impact. Mm -hmm. But the moment they cross that line and you've got a discipline, mm -hmm. then just put them on and don't negotiate them. We, our children could not, well, they could perhaps just walk. And they understood one, two, three. Mm -hmm. The one, two, three rule. Mm -hmm. You know, they will get out of hand and we'll say, don't do that. Okay, stop. And they will carry on. They will say one, two, and if we get to three, then they're in serious trouble. And so they would understand the line was drawn, mm -hmm. um, but never a reacting line. Mm -hmm. um, um, mm -hmm. We would always control that and disengage them out of the, mm -hmm. out of the action. Mm -hmm leave them and we will talk to each other, mm -hmm. we will pray or discuss it and then we'll go in mm -hmm. and we'll deal with them. And we will always tell them that we do it because we love them. Mm -hmm. yes. And that yes. message does sink. Yes. It's yes. just amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, you've got to do it consistently. You've got to be consistent. You can't discipline and then one day just don't feel like it. Yes. Yes. And you can't be unreasonable and change yes. the rules. Yes. Yes. There must be clear guidances yes. and there's no outburst. Yes. The yes. moment you have an outburst, you've lost yes. the battle. Yes. You, you actually yes. took a few steps back. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. Mm. I totally agree. And um, I wish I could honestly say that I was never, mm. ever angry when I disciplined. Mm. But there were times where I did. Where I was angry, there were times I had to apologize. Yes. Mm. I had to confess yes. my mm. sin to them. Yes. Ask for their forgiveness. Yes. Um, generally, though, I would say generally, I wasn't. I waited, and uh, but I would always explain to them: here's what you did wrong. Here's why it is wrong. We tried. To, we tried the best that we could to have conversations because it. And again, regardless of their age. Mm. To me, it was always, I just tend to think that children understand so much more than we give mm. them credit yes. for. They mm. always are, and you know, one of the questions actually, we didn't address it, but sometimes kids are always listening. Mm. <laughs> always, even now, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. They just have radar ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they, um, and I would just explain to them. And it's funny because wasn't it just this last week we were talking with all of our kids about when they were disciplined when they were young at yes. the dinner table. Yes. And they're all laughing about it now. But they, seriously, to each, each of them will say they are thankful they were disciplined. Because one, they've seen what other children are like who are not disciplined. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty chaotic. Secondly is that it's helped them to, and another thing is discipline for us was different per child yes. because mm -hmm. of what you said, they're unique people. Mm -hmm. They have different temperaments. Mm -hmm. Definitely someone who press the boundaries much more, like much more. Mm -hmm. Some would barely do that and it would be different because of that. And, uh, and then also will and stubbornness. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely different per child. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you have four children, we have four children, and and that you see it distinctively different mm -hmm. per child. It's not about birth order, it's, it's just they're just uniquely different. Mm -hmm. But I would say the consistency of which the consistency mm -hmm. factor is huge, the, the clarity, uh, making sure that they understand why they're being disciplined. I always, um, afterward, hug them, I prayed with them, told them I love them, I'm not. And you know what? Nine out of ten, I found this to be the case. After the the discipline, they would actually run away laughing oh, and happy. Absolutely. Be, be, before they'd be miserable and throwing crazy. like the worst tantrum, just angry. And then afterward, that whole process, after it all, and sometimes it would take a while, but they'd be happy. I believe that they they 
build up a deficit of love yeah. or security or whatever. Mm. I've seen it. And they will push you until you discipline them. Mm. Because that for them, if it's done in the right way, is mm. absolutely a dose mm. of affirmation. Yeah. Even mm. though we don't seem like it. Mm. And I just want to confirm what you said, Sam, about apologizing. Um, Kellen mm. spoke about mm. the most important lessons. If, you, if I had to answer it, I would have said, I taught my children how to ask for forgiveness. Mm. Mm. Because I've done it for many, many years. I would go to them and say, what I said there, mm. I want to ask you to forgive me. Mm. But I was totally out of line, mm -hmm. and it was wrong. Mm. Can you forgive And I will ask yes. specifically, can you forgive me? Mm -hmm. And they will say yes, and I will say I appreciate, mm. I receive that. Mm. And I think uh, if you can combine your discipline with that mm. humility mm. and asking for forgiveness, because right. mm. in a sense you give them a key to discipline you right. in a sense. Yeah. Mm. I think it just yes. unlock so many yes. attitudes for them yes. to understand that this is genuine mm. and authentic, and yes. that's what they need yes. to know. Yeah. There have been times where, and I, I think you could mm -hmm. affirm this, I think, is that when I have sinned and it's, it was publicly, in other words, my kids saw it, suicide, we'll have family worship or something, and I will confess it there to everybody. Because I always tend to think that if it's a sin one-on-one -on -one and no one else saw it, then I would go to that person. But if I wanted everyone to see, yes. okay, I mm -hmm. hurt mom and I... I'm so sorry. And I want you all to see that, you know, there's, there's forgiveness. I, it's, it's very interesting. A lot of parents tend to think, oh, when you have a conflict, hide. Let your kids never see that you're in conflict. Mm, and they know anyway. They yeah. 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 What they miss, what they miss <laughs> is, <laughs> what they miss is redemption. Yeah. What they miss yeah, is yeah. restoration and to me and reconciliation. And that is the beautiful part. That's the most glorious part of a Christian family, a Christian marriage mm -hmm. is not that they're perfect because mm -hmm. we're not. Mm -hmm. It's that when we mess up, just like our Heavenly Father forgives us, we forgive each other mm -hmm. and we, we see it together. And then reconciliation happens. And there's something beautiful about that. that you teach it to have conflict. Yes. Mm -hmm. You cannot not have conflict. <laughs> yeah. It's not possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. But how do you have conflict where you feel you're in control and you can manage it in the right spirit? Mm -hmm. And that's what they must learn. Yes. So when you've got that conflict, yes. that they can see, okay, this is rough. You know, there's a strong disagreement, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's clear boundaries. This is mm -hmm. all. So in mm -hmm. a sense, even when you have conflict, um, and they sense that and see that and part of the reconciliation is a great part but another part is there are some lines you never cross when you have conflict mm -hmm. you never say always and draw and slam mm -hmm. the door and say yeah. I will never you don't go there mm -hmm. so slowly they learn the pattern of mm -hmm. going in con into conflict because it's very important because mm -hmm. they will have conflict mm -hmm. um, yes. and then they will have that in them how to actually manage it mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any last thoughts? I just wanted to say um, not to give up in yes. um, oh, the mm -hmm. disciplining children. Mm -hmm. because, never, oh, never, oh, never, 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 never give up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So God's word is so true. And uh, sometimes I think we might see something with our kids that we think, oh boy, it's, it's never going to change. Or I, I don't know, this, this is really, really hard. Or, you know. But um, yeah, God is long suffering with us and yeah. He's faithful. Mm -hmm. And so I think that consistency mm -hmm. and our honoring God's word in the way that we discipline our children, um, I, I really believe God will answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not to give up. Mm -hmm. so on that note, Carolyn, my closing us. Sure. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this mm -hmm. evening. Um, those in Africa who are watching live this morning, mm -hmm. um, we do thank you. Thank you that uh, for those of us have got children, that you've given us children, mm -hmm. um, given us to mm -hmm. love on them, to care for them, to bring them up in your ways. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, that we could discuss so many different areas mm -hmm. of being parents and yeah, how to 
give those boundaries, how to show love um, and how for each child to know that they are part of the family um, and that they are special in that unit, the family unit, they're not somebody assigned. So I thank you. I thank you for the questions that have been asked. I thank you for the conversations that we could have um, and understanding that we are not perfect. And it's as um, we've made mistakes, our children see that they, we grow, they grow. Um, and we just, as Sue said as well, you know, it's just knowing you in it all. Um, that we can just give this all, even what we've spoken about tonight, to you father and uh, that you will just encourage those that need to be encouraged um, that you'll teach each one of us um, how to go further how to go day by day um, in parenting um, your biblical ways in our children in jesus name amen amen Amen. thank you everyone for joining us we'll pray for all blessings on your parenting